What's up, YouTube? <sighs> so, Sydney Watson made a video called Apparently Toxic Masculinity is the Reason for Climate Change. WTF is this. Now, before we get into this, I made a bit of a rant last night on my Facebook. Um... I get real tired of guys calling their women their piece of ass. Like, really? That's so old school and disrespectful, you know? Especially if you're almost 40 and your so-called girlfriend's almost 23. And, yeah, you're assuming that her so-called best friend is checking her out. Like, when he could just be smiling politely at her. And then you assume shit and say shit. And... You know, you gotta realize that a lot of today's women are very strong and independent and they're not gonna like being called such things. In fact, that was the point I made. I had uploaded the second half of the video to my desktop I didn't like the way it turned out, so I'm like, eh, fucking stupid. But anyways, <clears throat> yeah, that was, it, it's fucking stupid, YouTube, the way men treat women. It's fucking disgusting, like, nice guys like me have a hard time getting laid because of all the assholes out there. That's fucking fact. You know, because women will look at me and go, ugh, who the fuck is this creep, you know? Although, truth be told, it has gotten better. Women around town think your boy is sexy. But that's kind of beside the point. Um, I feel like I'm on a gondola. A gondola to hell. On a gondola to hell. Do, do, do. Gondola to hell. Do, do, do. Obscure ACDC Highway to Hell reference. Hi, my name is Sydney. Welcome back to my channel. Before we jump in, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. So hooray. I'm also back in Australia visiting my family for the holidays, so please enjoy a brief return to the old background. Hello! Now sometimes, things come onto my radar that make me question the overall intelligence of our species. I mean, like, more so than usual. I mean, sure, we made fire and electricity and Tesla, but then we also decided that gender doesn't exist and toxic masculinity is the reason for climate change. Oh my god. Yes, is the society we living in, I think the society we live in is high on crack. Because when I was a kid in the 90s, we had boys, we had girls, that was it. It was simple, it was easy to figure out, you know. Gender does not exist. Well... See, I could prove to you that gender does exist, but I'm pretty sure YouTube would ban my account for doing so, so... <sighs> just kidding. Oh my god, I had you guys going for a second, didn't I? You're just like, oh god, no, please, don't, don't pull out the cobra, please, whatever you do. Because apparently gender doesn't exist. <laughs> Oh, fucking god damn it. As per usual, that's not a joke. Humanity, on the other hand. Honestly, at this point, even aliens are watching us like, <laughs> what a mess. Wait, who's that Hillary person? Roger, did we abduct her? No? Good. It's so hard to get evil off the probe. Ah. <laughs> uh... That's funny. She made an American Dad reference, and then she slammed Hillary Clinton. That's... that's funny. <laughs> anyway, the new narrative to be born out of the ashes of global warming 
is that fragile white masculinity is the reason for climate change. Ugh. I don't even... <sighs> now, at first, this article popped up on my Twitter feed, and because I hate myself, I want to extinguish all happiness and joy from my life, I clicked it. Is fragile masculinity the biggest obstacle to climate action? I'm gonna say no. After I saw this, I promptly found the writer on Twitter and then found- Megan H. McKenzie wrote this article and right off the bat, uh, right off the bat, I'm just like, am I surprised that a feminazi wrote this? No, I'm not, but, <laughs> found out she's the sort of person who likes to court herself to herself. I mean, so there's that. I don't know what to tell ya. So the writer starts off by telling us about chuck nuts, which look like this, and how fast trucks and cars have long been understood as symbols of wealth and masculinity. Get the fuck out of here with it. Okay, Miss Megan H. McKenzie with your article on how trucks and fast cars have long been understood as symbols of wealth and masculinity. Ooh, cause boys in their trucks, right? Men in their trucks and their truck nuts. Yeah. You know, if Megan H. McKenzie came to Wyoming, she would see plenty of women who drive trucks, but that's kind of beside the point. And we're off to a great start. Yes, we are. We're off to a fantastic start, Sydney Watson. We are off to a fantastic start. There's a history of people coal rolling or retrofitting trucks so they burn more diesel and produce heavy plumes of black smoke. Oh god, yes, those people. Consuming fuel and producing smoke are a way to both signal hypermasculinity and an open disdain for environmental concerns. Jesus fucking Christ. You see what they're doing now? Do you see what they're doing? They're adding words to the word masculinity to make it sound bad. More worse than it already is. Hypersensitive blah, 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 blah. Hyper masculinity. Okay, there is no such thing as toxic masculinity. There is no such thing as hyper masculinity or what the fuck ever, okay? Masculinity is masculinity, period. And the key characteristics of a feminazi, and you'll see it too, is people who will add words to other words to make it sound worse than it already is. Uh, it's ridiculous. A smoky middle finger to environmentalists, if you will. Meg. Babe. Not every man is your ex-boyfriend. Also, can't say as I know any man who thinks that exhaust fumes signal hypermasculinity. You're right about that, Sydney Watson, 100%. When I see these wannabe rednecks who put these kits on their diesel trucks to make their diesel trucks belch a bunch of black smoke, I think to myself, wow, you're a douchebag, you're polluting the environment, and you're gonna break your engine a lot quicker because when you put these so-called diesel conversion kits that make your diesel trucks burn your diesel faster so it belches out smoke, <laughs> okay, you're a douchebag, you're ruining the environment, and you're gonna burn through your diesel truck engine real quickly. You're gonna be real fucking tough, real fucking tough, sitting there at the truck's mechanic shop when your truck gets towed away because you smoked out a Prius and it burned out your engine. Oh. Real talk for a second, it's like these women think that men have some organized society where they sit around talking about how much they hate women and trees while they torture flowers by pulling off their petals. I can assure you ladies, men don't have that. What men have is called having a beer with their buddies. Yeah, it's the truth. You go to your buddy's house, have a beer, or you go to your favorite bar with your buddy and you sit down and have a drink. And that's when men will sit there and bitch about their wife. It's common knowledge. Kind of like when women go to the salon to get their hair, their makeup, and their nails, and their feet, and their 
hands all pedicured and done up and the beautician at the barber shop says, who wants mimosas? And then every girl in there is like, I do, I do, I do. So the freaking beautician at the beauty salon busts out a ridiculously expensive bottle of pink champagne, $65 bottle of pink champagne, and some like overpriced bougie orange juice, just so you can say, oh, look at me and the brand I'm drinking. <laughs> and she mixes it for everyone, and everyone's just sitting there drinking my morning, drinking their mimosas, whatever the fuck, not even two o'clock in the afternoon, and they're sitting there drinking them. Man, am I right? <laughs> and every girl goes, right. Oh, was that too far? It's basically, oh my God, that's a huge fighter. It's basically like environmental. She saw a huge huntsman spider in her house, her family's house, as it is Australia. Yeah. The waterboarding. Here Wyoming gets rattlesnakes. So yeah, there we go. There's deadly creatures all over the planet. Here's where truck nuts and coal rolling become helpful in understanding why mostly white male And uh, now the this Meg person had to bring in race. Mostly white males. Really? Political leaders like Trump, ScoMo, and Albo champion fossil fuel extraction even as the country literally burns and in the face of overwhelming science regarding the climate crisis. Put simply, fragile masculinity might be the biggest obstacle to real climate action. There is no such thing as fragile masculinity. There is no such thing as hyper-masculinity. There is no such thing as toxic masculinity. Masculinity is masculinity, period. You know? And the fact that guys put truck nuts on their cars, they do it because it's funny. They do it because it's hilarious. Like, hey, check out my car. It's got some real balls. <laughs> okay? As far as guys revving up their engine. Like, okay, your buddy, your buddy just got his 68 Chevelle out of the shop. Got that candy apple paint. And that pearlescent purple pinstriping and the chrome's done up all nice and shiny. And the fucking body is just laser straight. Just clean, dude. Just, mmm. Ugh. I get chills just thinking about it. Yeah. And, of course, as a guy, you're just like, hey, bro, sweet ride. I want to hear it. <laughs> Gonna have to twist my leg. <laughs> but, no, apparently... According to this feminazi who wrote the article that Sidney Watson's talking about, apparently guys who put truck nuts on their cars is a symbol of fragile masculinity and blah, blah, blah. Really? It can't be because people think it's funny. <coughs> it, can't be, it can't be because people have a sense of humor. Like it's a play on words, like I said, oh look, my car has balls. <laughs> oh, no, can't be because of that. No, it's men are too fragile with their masculinity. Fuck off, dude. Masculinity has been associated with fossil fuel consumption, extraction, and burning for decades. I'm glad she got her jab in there about white men hating trees, because you know, all the other non-white countries are really doing so much good for the planet. No shit. This is exclusively the fault of white men and orange men. Orange men especially bad. Now this article summarizes that leaving fossil fuels in the ground symbolizes a loss of power and money for male leaders and their manliness. The writer also says that white conservative men are more likely to reject science, embrace lots of meat eating and belittle veganism which apparently is killing the planet, and white male leaders are fragile and anxious about societal changes, which is why they're happy to deny climate change. Okay. Yes. At the beginning of this video, Sidney Watson said, I question the intelligence of the human species, and quite frankly, I agree with her 100%. I wonder, has the planet gone mad? Because, yes, vegan food is killing the environment faster than 
anything else. The factories that produce the vegan food are so bad for the environment, it's not even funny. Furthermore, if cow farts are destroying the planet, then why not eat the cows? And that's that. Stop making your shitty ass vegan food. You know? I know. It's a lot to unpack. I am impressed, however, that we've managed to keep with this recent narrative that white men are to blame for everything. Yes, I am sick and tired of people blaming the white male for everything. Although, truthfully told, I'm not complaining. Because, you know what? Every race gets fucked with at some point. Now, to understand climate change, you have to examine global warming. Okay? Climate change is natural. Global warming is the result of climate change being sped up due to excessive pollution and waste in our oceans. Think about it. We had an ice age, and then the, that ice age melted, and now we have the North and the South Pole. Huh. Yeah. Even the little tiny penguins drowning. Penguins can swim. Shut up. But interestingly, this article isn't even the first of its kind. A Norwegian study titled Cool Dudes in Norway, Climate Change Denial Among Conservative Norwegian Men basically concludes that climate change denial in Norway seems to merge with broader patterns of right-wing nationalism. Because of course it does. Now, usually I read these studies so that I can properly summarize their findings, but this one's going to cost me $43. And I'm not going to pay that to read some Bork Flim Flam. So instead, I found this study sister... study. It's also titled Cool Dudes, except this time it looks specifically at conservative white American men, and also concludes that the unique views of conservative white males contribute significantly to the high level of climate change denial in the United States. Now, it points to several theories to explain why this is. One that I found particularly interesting is a concept called the white male effect. Yes, thank you for asking. That is indeed a research term that exists. And you guessed it, not a joke. The term white male effect was coined in 1994 and refers to the observed tendency of white males to be less concerned with all manner of risk than our women and minorities. So I guess then risk must be like walking out into traffic or all the ice caps melting or polar bears drowning. What is with you and drowning today? This 1994 study surveyed around 1200 white people and just over 200 minorities which tells you everything you need to know about its validity. But in the end, a main takeaway from its findings is that white males see less risk in the world because they create, manage, control, and benefit from much of it. And this attitude is reflected in the Cool Dudes America research and conservative beliefs as the reason why white men in America basically deny climate change. Sometimes I honestly ask myself how I got here and made you all come with me. I'm sorry. I mean, crazy climate people are bad enough as it is, but you want to know what's worse? Not protecting yourself on the internet. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing of it, YouTube. We're going to mute that for a second. Because um, yeah, Surfshark sounds legit, but um, that's not the uh, point of this rant video that I'm making. These fucking nut jobs that sit there and try to deny climate change. I'm like, if you deny climate change, you're retarded. Because climate change is very real. Okay? It's been existing since the dawn of time. Okay? Look at the history of our planet. Look at it. You look at the history of our planet, YouTube, and you will see that climate change, major shocker, has been happening since the dawn of time. We have things like the Ice Age. Yeah. Hello? 
life hack for you all. Use code SYDNEY to get 83% off and an additional three months free. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk when you try it out. So click the link in the description box and a fairy will get its wings. The planet thanks you. So basically, as weird as it sounds, all this research argues the same point. The capitalism and social structures are the reason that white men continue to ruin the planet. Because apparently, using less fossil fuels will hurt their fragile masculinity. Oh, here we go. Fragile masculinity. Toxic masculinity. These f stupid, dumb terms that feminazis come up with to make men look like huge assholes, basically. I'm, I'm so sick of it, YouTube. So sick of it. I've had these pop tabs on my key ring for a long time, and I don't know. I'm kind of sick of having them on there, so I'm going to clip them off. Hyper, ma hyper masculinity, toxic masculinity, fragile masculinity, all these fucking terms, okay? This is a very common characteristic of feminazis to take a word like sexism or masculinity and add a word to it to make it sound worse. Such as the case of benign sexism and reverse sexism and it's like, can we just stop for one second? Sexism is sexism, period. Masculinity is masculinity, period. And you want some real talk, YouTube? How would you women feel if you were being attacked for being a female, if you had males doing this shit. Hyperfeminism, or you know what I'm saying? Toxic feminism, or freaking hypersensitive feminism, where women are too sensitive to handle the truth, so they whine about everything. Well, okay, how would you ladies feel about that? If you're female identity identity was attacked simply for having characteristics that are considered female. Well, welcome to being a man. And I'm not going to say that being a, a woman's any easier. Truth be told, both sexes put up with a lot of crap in our society. Truth be told, YouTube, both sexes in our society put up with a lot, and I mean a lot, of BS. And quite frankly, I'm sick of it. I'm sick and tired of women and men in our society having to put up with so much crap. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the kind of crap that's going to make it super difficult for a lot of people to date. Because everyone's going to be stuck pointing fingers at each other. Like you white men. Yeah, well you women. Yeah, well you did it. Did it, did it. On a real note though, what if the article had said that black people and Mexicans with their lowriders were the main cause of the pollution on our planet? Oh, you know what people would say? That's racist. But you pick on the whites and no one says shit. I love it. I fucking love it. I wonder if this is what Martin Luther King Jr. envisioned when he said, I have a dream that blacks and whites got along and nobody fought and everyone just got along. No, probably not. Um, you don't get to quote Martin Luther King Jr. because you're not black. And if you say shit like that, you're part of the problem, not the solution. On a side note, one thing that I admired about Dr. Martin Luther King is he fought for racial equality. Not just for blacks, but for whites. He said, you know what, this is bullshit. A world where everyone gets along, nobody has racial or segregational discrimination, Did I get all the pop tabs off my keychain? I did. A 
Like, I hate to go there, but it's the truth, YouTube. If they blamed anyone else but the whites for the problems with our society, people would say, that's racist. <coughs> and what do you, <coughs> what do you think is going to happen when white people get blamed for everything, white people get fucked with, white people get discriminated against? Eventually, they're going to revolt and fight back, and then we're going to have another race war on our hands, and we don't want that. Like, instead of blaming one specific race for the problems in our society, how about we take responsibility for our own shitty decisions? There's a thought. I know it's a shocking concept to grasp, YouTube. And now you're sitting there going, I don't know if I can wrap my head around that one, Josh. You mean instead of blaming a certain race for everyone's problems, taking responsibility for our own shitty decisions? Huh. This is apparently compounded by ideas like being a vegan will make you a soy boy. Which last time I checked, it literally does. Because who needs testosterone when you can grow boobs, am I right? Which <laughs> has led to articles like this. Fragile masculinity says meat is manly. If we don't challenge that, people will die and the earth will be irreversibly damaged. Oh my fucking god. This is why I hate feminazis with a fucking passion. Fragile masculinity says meat is manly. Oh yeah, that stereotype that us men, we love our steak, right? Because we're meat eaters. Hey, guess what? Women eat meat too. They do. I've seen women eat steaks, burgers, hot dogs, bacon. Okay, this... this this notion, this negative stereotype that men eat meat and we drive our trucks and we're obnoxious and we're so easily offended because our masculinity is being challenged every day. Well, part of that's true. Men have their masculinity challenged almost every day. Men are simply not allowed to be men anymore because it's now considered sexist. You like the color blue? <laughs> That's sexist. You're a male bigot. That offends me as a woman. <laughs> um, the fuck's your problem? Are you feeling okay there, Karen? Do you need a back rub or maybe a warm hug? Or a sedative? Because I'm pretty sure it's your mates who've suggested eating people. And I mean, like, I don't want to be Captain Poopy Pants over here stomping on the dreams of all the vegans, but like, isn't it way worse for the environment to manufacture and create vegan food? Yep. Climate change. The facts from 2014. Yep. Vegan food is, if you Google it, vegan food is much better for the environment than cow flatulence. Yep. Vegan farts. Okay, they probably smell horrible. They smell like, you know what I'm saying? About as bad as the food they make. And here's the thing of it. You can be vegan without eating vegan food. Consume vegetables only. But no, that makes you a vegetarian. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. I feel like the term vegan is just another fancy word for only eats vegetables. Doesn't eat dairy. And you know why people who are vegan, why they struggle with having energy, any sort of muscle mass, because they lack the one thing every human being needs, and that's protein. So your protein substitutes they have for vegans, that's just it. They're substitutes, man. They're not as good as the real thing.
along the line, I'm not quite sure when, feminism decided to adopt climate change as its younger sister, which is probably why so many women's marches and events include environmentalism. And all of this has brought about the term and concept petromasculinity. Still not a joke. For many, ex Yeah, petromasculinity, yet here we go again, adding words to other words to make it sound worse. Petromasculinity, where a man's masculinity is defined because he likes to, he's, his masculinity can't handle it unless he has some, some sort of fuel to burn. Keep in mind that these fucking idiots who write these stupid fucking articles don't seem to realize that, hey dipshit, it's part of evolution and progression. And here's the thing of it, YouTube. In all honesty, here's the thing of it. <sighs> Let's say, for example, that we as a society never invented cars. Just bear with me for a second here. Let's say, for example, that we as a society never made cars. So now what? It, people are still driving around in horse and carriage kind of thing. You know. So basically, you'd be like living like the Amish, basically. Okay, now, here's what would happen. People would complain about the horse poop. All right? So even if the world we live in hadn't invented cars and everyone was still driving horse and buggy or a bicycle, people would still complain about, uh, about the uh, horse poop. They'd be sitting there going, what are we going to do about this horse poop? Well, we can save it for manure and church bells. Oh, wait, they already did. Well, they changed the locks on my apartment complex, so I gotta go and get a new key. That's why I gotta get the a new outside key, which is why I'm messing with my keychain in the first place. There we are. There's that. All right. Which, I'll go get me a, a new key here in a second. They said they weren't going to be available till the afternoon, so... I figured let's wait till the afternoon and then we'll see, you know. Uh. But I'm not joking. These feminazis have now equated masculinity to burning fossil fuels. Never mind the fact that women drive cars. No. Nope. Never mind that, you know... Now, for a while, women were not allowed to drive. Back in the day when cars first came about, when the first cars were invented, when the very, very first cars, automobile, motocar, whatever you want to call it, whenever the very first gas-powered vehicles were invented, yes, women were not allowed to drive back then. But over time... Gradually, women became drivers. And to gain a better understanding of why women are writing these stupid, no stupid nonsense flim-flam articles about men and what pieces of shit we are and how masculine challenged we are and blah, 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 to gain a better understanding of it, you have to understand women's history. Okay, the thing you have to realize is that women have had to fight for their rights. You know, women have been oppressed for centuries. They've had to fight for their rights. Okay, and all of a sudden they get their rights and instead of being grateful, like, oh, hey, we have more rights. Awesome. No, let's 
treat men like shit now. Fuck off, dude. Extracting and burning fuel was a practice of white masculinity and of American sovereignty, such that the explosive power of combustion could be crudely equated with virility. Hell might not be such a bad option after all. Petro-masculinity points to such moments, suggesting that masculinity can be reaffirmed through obeisance to oil. Guys, really, if this doesn't flim your flam, I don't know what will. As expected, this research article talks a lot about Donald Trump and how white men basically use fossil fuels to create society. Okay, so you got a context of this whole video right here. Um, I would encourage you to watch the rest of it. It's a good video. Um, like, I don't know about you, YouTube, but I get so sick and tired of this crap. The fact that men cannot drive cars without having their masculinity attacked. Men cannot simply drive cars without having their masculinity attacked. It's fucking annoying. As a male, I'm sick of having my gender's masculinity attacked for something that women do. Are you serious? <laughs> okay. Women drive cars. Women drive trucks. Women eat steaks burgers, hot dogs, etc. Ribs, barbecue, okay? This notion that only men do these things is so sexist. And yet, the best part of it, women who write articles like that constantly complain about how sexist men are towards women. But then they, then, then they themselves have no problems being sexist towards men. Like, that's the pot calling the kettle black. And if you're going to complain about sexism that your gender receives, you best make sure you're not sexist towards the other gender, you fucking hypocrite. As always, I would encourage you to check out Sidney Watson's channel. Sidney Watson's a rare rarity in these modern times. There are a lot of women who think like she does. They're just hard to find because, well, you know, gender-based stereotypes. Oh yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Women who write articles talking about how men and their masculinity and their trucks and blah, 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 truck nuts, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look at you with your gender-based stereotypes. Aren't you adorable? And as it turns out, it's not just white men that drive trucks. Black dudes drive trucks, too. I've seen it. Okay, so this fucking racist, this gender-based assumption that white males and their trucks, I'm sick of it. I am sick of it. Like, real talk, if it was really about the environment, why include that mostly white males bullshit?
Anyways, you two, if you like the rant videos, subscribe for more. And don't let these fucking sheep brainwash you. Here's your red pill. Now take it with a glass of shut the fuck up and listen and have a nice day.